Hello, my name is Anna Morrison and I'm presenting to you on behalf of the National Apprenticeship Service. Apprenticeships have been around for hundreds of years and they've changed a lot in that time. So in this session, we're going to be talking about what an apprenticeship is, the range of apprenticeships, the different levels of apprenticeships and the different ways that you might learn as an apprentice. The reason we're covering this topic is because at some point in your future, you may want to consider applying for an apprenticeship. And so it will be important for you to understand what an apprenticeship is and the range of subjects and levels that they cover. As a country, we're currently going through some uncertain times because of the coronavirus pandemic, but we're still here to support you and we still want to use this time to help you to prepare for the future. Through this presentation, we're going to be dispelling some common myths about apprenticeships, as well as giving you enough information to truly understand apprenticeships so that you can consider them as an option after leaving school, college or sixth form. Apprenticeships are a really fantastic way of working and learning at the same time. An apprenticeship is full time, which means working for at least 30 hours per week, but actually most apprentices will work for probably between 37 to 40 hours a week. This will also include your paid time to complete your studies. Throughout the apprenticeship, most of the apprentices time, around 80%, will be spent in the workplace gaining real experience with an employer. This time is called on the job. Some of your paid time as an apprentice will also be spent with a training provider who will help you to learn as an apprentice and achieve your qualifications. This time is called off the job training and we're going to look at that in a bit more detail further on into this presentation. Lots of people get a bit confused about apprenticeships so let's look at what they are, where they can take you and who they're for. First of all an apprenticeship is paid work. Legally, an employer has to pay their apprentice at least the national minimum wage for apprentices, which is currently £4.15 an hour. This is lower than the national minimum wage for under 18s, which is currently £4.55 an hour, but it recognises that some people will be going into their first job with no experience at all. The wage also takes into account that employers often invest a lot of time and money while supporting their apprentices through their employment and their programme, not just by paying a wage, but giving them time off or paid time to study, investing in them, um, arranging opportunities for them to spend time with colleagues and undertaking additional training as well. The good news is, though, that lots of employers pay more than the national minimum wage for apprentices, and there's often room for progression and pay rises within the apprenticeship as well. An apprenticeship is a real job with real responsibilities. Apprentices are expected to work hard and just like anyone else in the company have contracts of employment which set out their rights and responsibilities as a worker. Apprentices will spend time working alongside their colleagues to learn from their experience and will be given tasks and responsibilities, sometimes from day one. So it's not unusual for an apprentice to um, be given real responsibilities that are theirs to take care of and perform every day. For lots of different people, um, apprenticeships are there. So regardless of your background, there are apprenticeships for everyone. Employers tell us that they are always looking for a diverse workforce and they're looking for a mix of different people to fill different jobs at different levels. There are lots of different levels of apprenticeship or going all the way up to degree level. And we'll talk more about levels and the types of roles that are out there a little later. Also, there are no fees to pay. So no level of an apprenticeship incurs any cost to the apprentice. Even higher and degree level apprenticeships don't cost any money at all. And the tuition fees are always paid for by the employer and or the government, which means that students aren't expected to pay student fees. And so you're less likely to incur any debt. An apprenticeship can lead to progression. Some apprenticeships or some apprentices will be offered a fixed term contract of employment, which means a permanent job is not always guaranteed after the apprenticeship. The majority of apprentices, however, are given permanent contracts where they'll stay with the employer and um, with that company where they're trained and sometimes they'll even then progress on to another apprenticeship. So with a fixed term contract, at the end of your apprenticeship, you um, potentially will be able to apply for a job with that same employer if they have vacancies, or you would be able to look at other employment opportunities. Whereas if you're on a permanent contract, then the expectation would be that at the end of your apprenticeship, you would stay with that employer in employment and hopefully take on more responsibility and perhaps move up to the next level of an apprenticeship. 
Apprentices have great social lives. Lots of young people are worried that as an apprentice you won't get to have fun or meet other young people and this just isn't true. Depending on the size of your company you may find yourself working with lots of other young people and you could even make friends with older like-minded people. You'll still have access to all of the student discounts and you'll get paid holiday of course. Um, you will hopefully be able to meet other apprentices through your programme as well, so your training provider will help you to meet other apprentices. And students who are on higher and degree apprenticeships are entitled to exactly the same other, same as other students. So, um, for example, if you're linked with a university, then you'll still have access to the same student unions, sports facilities, clubs and societies. Apprenticeships do allow you to relocate, so one of the best things about apprenticeships is that they're everywhere. If you want to carry on living at home, you can, but you can sometimes move around the country with an apprenticeship, so it's really important to do your research because some companies will help you to relocate to take work with them. So, for example, they may help you to find accommodation and they may even support the costs of that as well. And apprenticeships are not an easy option. Apprenticeships can be extremely competitive, so even applying for apprenticeships can be quite a lot of hard work. Then once you're in your apprenticeship, you'll be working full time and studying for a minimum of a year, if not longer. So it's gonna be very different to full-time education. The rewards can be great as long as you put the effort in, but apprenticeships are definitely not the easy option. When we talk about apprenticeships, people sometimes think of a few certain roles, like they'll say, oh, you know, kind of construction, for example, which is an area that we've had apprenticeships in for hundreds and hundreds of years. But it's really important to understand that there are also hundreds and hundreds of new apprenticeships that have come about. So you can see on the screen there, there's lots of different areas that you might be able to take an apprenticeship in. It's really important to do your research. The, the um, topics showing on the screen or the apprenticeships showing on the screen are just a handful, just to give you an idea. There's many, many more that are out there. The range of apprenticeship job roles is really amazing. And there are literally hundreds of apprenticeship standards that cover thousands of apprenticeship job roles. If you're not sure if you can do an apprenticeship in the role or the industry that you're interested in, then you can do some research on apprenticeships.gov.uk, which is the government website. And you can also look at the apprenticeship standards that are being developed. And that website that you would need is called the Institute for Apprenticeships.org. The range of employers that offer apprenticeships is absolutely incredible. Of course, because of what's happening at the moment with coronavirus, it's worth noting that the employers that are showing on the screen at the moment possibly won't be recruiting currently. But what we do know is that these employers usually do recruit and we're hoping that when everything returns to normal, we'll see them carry on with their apprenticeship recruitment. The images on the screen show you some really familiar logos of big companies in England who usually recruit apprentices. Around 50% of apprenticeships started are with large companies like this, but 50% of all of the apprenticeships that get started in England are with smaller local companies. It can be tempting to think that the best apprenticeships are just with the big well-known companies, but many of the smaller employers have absolutely brilliant schemes, award-winning schemes that can enable you to fast track your career progression. So it's really important to do your research and don't ignore smaller employers just because you haven't heard of them because they can be just as good as the big employers. If you take a look at the Amazing Apprenticeships website, there's a section called Vacancy Snapshot. And there you can see behind the scenes of many of the employers that are shown on the screen now. You can look at what it's like to work for them and watch video clips of their apprentices and even find out what their recruitment process is like and look at some hints and tips from the people who lead the recruitment processes in their organisation as well. We mentioned apprenticeship levels slightly earlier on, so, so I'll explain this in a little bit more depth. There are four different apprenticeship levels, intermediate, advanced, higher, and degree. Higher apprenticeships, or the term higher apprenticeships, actually covers everything from level four through to level seven. Um, and a level six or a level seven um, degree apprenticeship includes, or can include a bachelor or a master's degree, or sometimes an equivalent qualification. 
The level of apprenticeship that you start at will depend on the kind of job that you're applying for. So it's really important not to be held back by only looking for a particular level. For example, some people say, oh, I just want to find a degree apprenticeship. But actually, it may be that you need to start as an advanced apprentice and then work your way up. Doing a job is completely different to getting GCSEs or A-levels, and that's why it can be a bit confusing. When we compare the different levels, sometimes people say level two is like GCSEs, level three is like A-levels. But really, doing a job and studying at school are so completely different, it's, it's hard to compare the two. So keep an open mind so that you can explore all of the opportunities that are available to you. As I mentioned right at the start, every apprentice will be supported by a training provider. So this could be a college, an independent training provider, a university, or it could be that the employer has their own in-house training provider or training provision as well. That training provider will help you to achieve your qualifications and make sure that you complete your apprenticeship. At least 20% of your time during your apprenticeship will be spent um, learning new skills through something called off the job learning. So this is where you'll be working towards your qualification and building up your skills, knowledge and behaviour around that apprenticeship and the job that you're doing. There's many different ways that off the job training can be delivered and it will really depend on your employer and also your training provider. For some apprentices, their off the job learning is actually delivered at work. So this could mean that a tutor will come to teach you independently at work. It could be that you're um, one of a group of apprentices in the workplace and so you'll have your study at work with all of your other apprentices. Or it could be that you'll undertake different tasks and activities at work that won't actually be part of your day-to-day -day job but that will be helping you to develop new knowledge and skills. You may also find that you'll carry out some learning through online learning and obviously this is where the majority of off the job is happening at the moment because everyone is pretty much working from home which means that online learning has really become the primary method of apprentices learning at the moment but if we were under usual circumstances then you may find yourself in a kind of classroom learning environment or going off to college or your training provider and meeting up with other apprentices and being part of a group of apprentices learning together now 20% is the equivalent of one day a week but that doesn't mean that you will be learning for one day a week it doesn't mean that um, kind of one day a week you won't be in the workplace it could be that your um, organization your employer and your training provider will decide that perhaps once a month you'll get together with other apprentices and that you'll then complete some of your other off-the-job activities and learning through an online platform so it's really important when you're looking at your apprenticeship vacancies see what they say about how the off the job element is delivered, which training provider they work with and what that learning experience might be like for you. Um, and I've said it a few times, but you really need to do your research. So here's just a few of the places where you can find out more about apprenticeships. Vacancy Snapshot is a really good place to start because that's where a lot of the employer profiles are held. You can go on to there completely free of charge and click around. So the website for that is amazingapprenticeships.com forward slash vacancies. The next website to tell you about is the government website Find an Apprenticeship. Now this is the platform where the majority of apprenticeship jobs are usually advertised. At the moment, obviously because of coronavirus, we have found that there are less than usual numbers of vacancies being posted onto this site, although there are still a few. So some employers are still recruiting at the moment, whereas others may have perhaps paused their recruitment for the time being. So it's a really good idea to go onto this website, find an apprenticeship, familiarise yourself with it, register for an account so that you're all set up and also manage your alerts so that you start receiving notifications by email or text message when new jobs are added that you might be interested in. And then we have the National Career Service, again, another free service that you're able to access. The National Career Service can help you with advice around apprenticeships, but they can also help you to think of other options, other things that you might like to line up, like perhaps further learning, or other employment opportunities that aren't necessarily an apprenticeship. The website's brilliant, there's loads and loads of information on there, but also they offer a few other ways that they can support you. There's a telephone helpline, there's a web chat facility, and also every Wednesday evening they take to Twitter, and you can post your questions to an expert live on Twitter and have them answered straight away.
And, <clears throat> excuse me, as we noted before, the country is going through such a challenging time at the moment, and there may be some confusion around upcoming opportunities or your next steps as things continue to change. But we just want you to know that there's lots of support out there for you. The National Apprenticeship Service has a helpline that you can contact, and you can also contact the National Career Service, as I said. Apprenticeships are something to really seriously think about as a really great option for you, but it's very important that you do your research and you keep your options open so that when you do need to make a choice, you're making an informed choice and one that's right for you. I hope you found that useful. There's more information about apprenticeships available on this website, amazingapprenticeships.com. There's also more information available on apprenticeships.gov.uk. Thank you.